Good afternoon, uh, respected uh, secretary, uh, the distinguished panel guests, and the uh, participants here. It's a pleasure uh, for me to be present here and be an integral part of this uh, initiative which India has launched. Uh, I would just uh, like to tell you that we address a part of Mumbai, which is a suburb in Mumbai, which is uh, which ranges about 400 square kilometers. And uh, we serve about 3 million consumers on our network. And the biggest challenge is that uh, about over one third of them uh, stay in the slums. But everybody gets 24 by 7 power. And the reason behind that, and we have been doing this over nine decades. We are a nine decade old company. We have always been upgrading our infrastructure to be ahead of technology to lead the change. So what we have basically is that we manage about 1900 megawatt of peak demand. We do it effectively. And we have an embedded generation uh, uh, along with uh, our partners there in Tata, which provides an islanding facility to Mumbai. Because anything happens in the grid or disturbances, Mumbai can cut off and survive on its own, sharing some uh, undesired loads. Well, uh, the main issue which goes here is that uh, we have about uh, five times our LT net network, which is underground uh, and uh, uh, compared to the HT. It's five, LT is five times. The reason being that uh, Mumbai is a highly densely populated area and uh, 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 the availability of putting up substations becomes a very uh, great challenge. So over the years, uh, to ensure that we remain, uh, uh, we provide uh, 24 by 7 service to our customers, uh, the technology which we had devised, uh, uh, devised many years ago was a ring main technology by which that every substation uh, over that is connected in a ring with each other. So whenever one transformer fails, the other side source picks up and the consumer does not feel any kind of uh, dip or power outage. So that's the beginning of smartness. And uh, these, uh, we have over 6,000 substations and about over 2,000 are connected in through, through a, a secondary SCADA system, which has automated switch gears so that uh, the, whenever the, on the case of power outage uh, and the, the uh, power coming back, it is automatically put on and uh, this is addition to our 33 kV SCADA. I'm what I'm talking is the 11 kV side. Now, uh, as I uh, say is the uh, challenge uh, remains that while we have made our HT side uh, quite automatic, automated, uh, we are today uh, faced with the challenge of putting our LT network uh, into an automation mode. Because LT network is a last mile connectivity network which goes to the homes from the consumers. And that is about uh, 20,000 kilometers and more. So what we have embarked on other than this distribution automation, which I was talking about, is that uh, creating a local intelligence in our LT network. Uh, by that I mean that uh, when our LT network goes and goes to the field, there, is, uh, there are pillars, uh, there is a transformer, then it goes from the switch gears to the pillars and to the meter cabins. So what we have uh, launched upon is uh, putting a kind of an artificial intelligence, if you may so call it, that uh, whenever there is an outage, uh, whenever there is a fault which is being coming into the system from the LT side, there is a changeover scheme which, hap which will happen and by which uh, it will not only uh, prevent an outage, but also prevent faults on our LT cables. And as I said, that entire thing is uh, uh, underground. What happens that we need to dig up the uh, ground and uh, we need to pay a heavy uh, rain statement charges. And uh, this will obviate all that and come into a predictive mode. So uh, with this, we not only uh, automate uh, the LT side and provide uninterrupted power supply to the consumers, but we also reduce our cost because the most important thing which we face that whatever automation we do, ultimately it should result in a saving of cost and the cost should be passed on to the customers. So 
it, it, this is one of the things which we are doing and in terms of making our substations that is 11 by 440 kV substations IoT compliant, we have already made 100 of such substations where we, are put, uh, we have put sensors uh, for monitoring the health of the uh, transformer uh, and uh, we have uh, an FPI which we have made commun communicable, we have done 100 of that and by this, uh, this uh, uh, substation uh, becomes an IoT compliant substation which ultimately t wants uh, us uh, uh, through a, a local SCADA that uh, this uh, uh, transformer or this network is not healthy. It's going to face an outage. It's having a problem. The various temperature sensors are sending sense, uh, signals. So we need to do some predictive analysis uh, and we need to do some predictive maintenance because uh, over the development which has come up over these 90 years uh, uh, from uh, preventive maintenance to prescriptive maintenance now is the age of predict predictive maintenance. So what we believe is that whatever we talk on smartness on building intelligence into the system, we do it actually in our place. Now going forward to the uh, one side is the network side, the other is the meter side. So what we have, we have executed a project, uh, a trial project uh, of building a canopy uh, network through our gateways and nodes. Uh, uh, the nodes would be basically fitted, uh, we had fitted that into a few thousands of meters and we have tested on over a low band uh, RF communication uh, and we successfully transmitted the uh, meter data to, the, uh, uh, to, our, uh, to our MDM and uh, we have tested it via the gateways. Now we are going in for a large scale canopy for covering our 400 square kilometer uh, uh, network where we have a lot, we'll have a lot of gateways and uh, the uh, uh, data from the meter and from the network uh, uh, would come uh, over low um, uh, this RF communication to the gateways and from the gateways it will go there end to the cloud through our uh, OFC and uh, uh, servers out there and uh, uh, we are building up uh, uh, an RFP for a big data analytics because as we know that uh, we may put a lot of smart things into the system but imagine that uh, we are sitting in a control room and a lot of alarm starts buzzing. The easiest thing is to just shut it out. So we need to convert all those uh, outbursts of data. Let's say a smart meter sending about 60 to 90 pieces of data. So what do we do? We need to converge that data through an, through an algorithm to let's say nine manageable datas. For example, we may manage a data on outage we manage a data on recovery, we manage a data on loss, and we manage a data on demand forecasting. So by this way, when we will be able to convert those 90 pieces of data per se into nine uh, deliverable, actionable uh, data, then comes the real uh, use of having a smart grid and a smart uh, system. So going forward, what we have done is Currently, we have a lot of fusemen who goes to attend the fuse calls. We have uh, uh, we have a connected system where the uh, where uh, with the SCADA and the GIS. So, into the, uh, we have built a mobile app, and in the mobile app, the fuseman sees that uh, where is the outage taking place via the SCADA. And uh, it, it has the last mile connectivity through our GIS direction. So he acknowledges that and he uh, goes to the site, uh, uh, corrects the fuse and he punches back into the system and that goes back to the, uh, our SAP system and at the same time it goes back to the customer and the customer can give a feedback via that same uh, app, uh, mobile app that whether he is satisfied with the restoration of the outage or not. So by this, actually, I mean to say that whatever we do, ultimately, it should result into satisfaction of the customer or delight of the customer. This is on the side of the fuseman. In terms of meter reading, uh, while we are thinking, we are going in for uh, a smart meter, uh, we have already built a portal for our uh, high-end customers where the customer can uh, monitor online 
uh, his peak demand, uh, sorry, his demand, his load curve, his power factor, and he can see, even a domestic consumer can see, that how much of units he has consumed, both in terms of units as well as terms of rupees. So he puts a control or check if he feels that he is over consuming things. So uh, by this, uh, what uh, I was trying to uh, tell um, all of us is that we, whatever we do, we first check whether the ROI is good, whether whatever capex or opex we put it into system, how it reduces, uh, improves my operati operation efficiency, and how it reduces my cost to serve my customer. I cannot, we cannot afford to have a high costly solution and pass on the entire uh, cost to the customer. So uh, we need to do small, small innovations, of whatever we call in India call it jugad, and uh, we have to build on our existing infrastructure. We cannot throw away the existing infrastructure of uh, 3 million meters. We cannot throw in an existing infrastructure of 25,000 kilometers of network. So we have to be scalable on that available infrastructure. So that's the challenge. So whatever we need to do, we cannot disrupt uh, our consumers. So we need to build on uh, what we have slowly, and that's what we are doing. And finally, we are trying to achieve a, a point where the customer need not come to us. Like we have already a mobile app, and we have uh, uh, through that mobile app, the customer can connect to us. We have a WhatsApp also. For that means he wants to uh, uh, want to know us anything about his billing, his queries, his new connection is online. That means he goes online and he says that I want a new connection or a meter and he can do it online. He need not come to my office. So starting from new connection to various services like change of name, where the developer builds a property uh, and then the uh, change of name, then the consumer due, uh, due to any, uh, any commercial complaints and any power outage complaints, the consumer need not come to our office from the comfort of his homes on the mobile and on his fingertips, he can uh, get all the services uh, and that's why we call it hashtag lives made easier. So with this um, uh, kind of uh, structure, uh, uh, the main challenge obviously, which I would, not, I would like to mention here, with India going to uh, a renewables target of 175 gigawatt would be a challenge uh, for every utility and how to manage and back down their generations. And uh, the other thing which I feel in the future, uh, maybe not in the near future, but maybe a decade from now on, they have a lot of distributed energy sources, uh, virtual power producers. So uh, when there will be a lot of uh, solar rooftops, let's say, storage coming into the system and solar parks, now what happens that when all these things come into the system and there are small distributed uh, microgrids uh, in the future, what would be the role of utility? That's the thing to ponder. Now how will the utility reshape itself and still maintain their uh, charges and get back uh, their um, uh, cost? So they need to transform into a maybe value added system integrator. So that would be a challenge, maybe not now, but we need to think how to address that. And with that note, I thank all of you for listening to me. Thank you.